the simple happiness of children at play in the warmth of early sunlight. Trusting little hands which reach for a world of make-believe. Faces which shine with quiet contentment as they thrill to sun-warmed air. Tense little figures poised confidently on the brink of discoveries which they sense but cannot see. For these children know the soft green of grass only by its touch. They play in the garden of Sunshine House at Northwood, Middlesex, one of seven nursery schools in Britain where blind children feel their way to life. A caressing touch and a new world of fantasy is revealed to her, peopled by furry creatures clad in warmth and softness. Who among the sighted shall know the beauty of that other world, conceived within the hearts of those who see by touch? Though darkness envelops her, the light of inner faith is there to guide. In rest, they close their eyes against the daylight they cannot see. But naught else is shut out, for their eyes are not the only gateway to their minds, though visual life may be forever an unwritten book for Rosamond. Sensitive fingers build for her a picture of the world beyond her darkness. A present of sweets from the world without, and carefully the questing fingers ensure that not one of the little circles shall be left out. For in the kingdom of the blind, he leads who can help and guide. And so it is with Sheila who walks in confidence and has no fear. stumble and the scent of fresh cut flowers to reassure. Beauty for little Rosamond lies in texture and shape and the joy of discovery is with her as touch and smell and hearing too build for her a picture of fragrant loveliness. Patient guidance, understanding, these matter above all else in the training of those other senses by which she may learn to recognize, to see in her mind's eye, the unseen world about her. Self-reliance is the one sure basis for the upbringing of these toddlers. They learn to see with their hands, and though, like little Anne, they may sometimes be uncertain, their instinct is sure, their steps unfaltering. Margaret Rose is ready for bed. She knows that it is night, for the air has grown colder, and there is silence all around. This is her home and these her few possessions. And if she wonders at times about the unseen world about her, who shall say what visions she sees in her dreams?